Hey everyone, it's Justin from Number Crunch Nerds. The purpose of today's video is to learn to combine the if, the and, and the average functions in Excel. To put those three together and do some function combinations so that you can do more advanced analysis on your data sets, whether it be for work, for school, or whatever. So let's work on putting these three together. And we're going to use uh, a, tran a transaction set here, a data set. And it's going to be real simple. Let's just say you have a sales funnel that has three transactions in it. So what's a sales funnel? Well, a customer comes along online. They are offered some item and they engage in a transaction for that item. And then after that, they're offered another item and then they're offered a third item. OK, so this data set would be that this customer from California purchased thirty three dollars in their first uh, thirty three dollars of product in their first transaction. Then they purchased 454 in their second transaction, and they purchased 173 in their third transaction. So that's what this data set is representing. So let's say you have this data about your customers, and let's say you want to know if a customer spent more than $100 in transaction one, then what was the average of the amount they spent between transactions two and three? OK, so if the amount spent here was more than 100, then what are what are people spending on average for the second and third transaction that they are offered? OK, that's what we want to know. So we're going to combine the if formula as well as the average formula in this first example to get that answer. All right. The colors that I've put here are uh, they don't mean anything other than to separate the arguments out. So it's easier for you to see. OK, so the first argument is if first argument transaction one is greater than 100, if that's true, OK, remember the if function, this is a test to see if this is true or false, the first argument. If that's true, then average transactions two and three together. And if it's false, here's the third argument, if it's false, return a blank cell. If you want to return a blank cell, just put two quotation marks right next to each other like, like I have here. So let's try this one out. So we have equal sign if open bracket. So if transaction one is greater than $100, okay, that's the logical test. That's going to return a true or false. Then I'm going to put a comma. We're on the next argument now. If that's true, then I want you to take the average, and I'm going to put in the average formula right here, of these two numbers. And I'm going to close bracket, and I'm going to put a comma. So that so far we have if that's greater than 100, and that's true, if that's true, then average the next two numbers together. Otherwise, now we're in the, we're in the value of false argument. I'm going to put two brackets, uh, excuse me, two sets of parentheses right next to each other. That will return a blank cell. Close bracket. And that's the entire argument. So let's see what we got. Let's see if that's working. It says if this is greater than 100, which it is, so I would expect some value to be returned, average these two numbers together. So if I go down here, Excel has an average function right at the bottom. It says 383.5, which is right here, rounded up to uh, 384. OK, so it appears to be working. So I'm going to drag that down all the way to the bottom here. All right, and then I'm just going to go ahead and put in another average of all of these. And let's see what that tells us. So what, what does this number represent? This is, this is how much customers spent on average in transactions two and three if they spent more than $100 in transaction one. So this would be that on average across all customers, if a customer is willing to spend at least $100 in transaction one, then on average, they're spending 435 between transactions two and three. All right, so that's combining the if function with the average function. Now let's combine if and and average together here. So in this formula, let, here's the question. Let's say we want to know the same thing as above, except we want to know for customers only in Oregon. We don't want to know for other customers. We just want to, we just want to look at Oregon customers and know, answer this same question that was above here, but only for Oregon customers. All right, so now we're going to combine and. And remember that the and function 
will return a value of true or false. Okay, it will return a value of true or false. So we're going to have to make a slight adjustment within the if function for that. Okay, so just keep this in mind. The, the and function returns the true or false. So here we go. If, now the first argument inside the if is test something to see if it's true or false. Okay, so right now, instead of just putting a direct calculation like is this greater than that or is this equal to that, we're sticking another function in here. Within the first argument, right? The first argument goes all the way up to this comma right here. Within the first argument of the if function, we're saying and, and means test a, a, an unlimited number of um, logical arguments for me. So you just separate them by commas. So here I'm gonna test, does state equal Oregon? That's my, within the and function, right? I have and open bracket. Within that I have, does the state e equal Oregon? Okay, so that would, that would be, if that's a yes, it's testing to see if all of them are true. Then I put a comma. The next one I'm testing is, is transaction one greater than 100? Okay, so if the state is Oregon and the transaction number one is greater than 100, then the and function will return a value of true. Okay, now we're still within the first argument of the if function all the way up to this comma. If this green section right here returns a value of true, we have to ask the if function, is this area in green equal to true? Okay, and true in this case is not text. It's a formula result, so you don't have to put this in, um, in quotation marks. If it was text, you would have to put this word in quotation marks, but it's not. It's the, the result of a function. So all we have to do is say if, all this stuff in the green equals true, then the rest of the function is the same as before. Average the next two numbers, otherwise return a blank cell with two uh, quotation marks side by side. So let's test it out, all right? Here we go. Equals if open bracket. So the logical test that I want is actually, a, it's gonna be a multi-part test. So I'm gonna put in and right away, and. And is going to test several things. It's just logical one, logical two, logical three. It'll test as many logical arguments as you want. So right now we're inside the and function. I'm going to say, does this equal Oregon? And I believe actually we have to put this in, um, we have to actually put that in quotation marks because that is text. Okay, so I'm going to adjust this down here in a minute. That should be in, in uh, that should be in, um, quotation marks, because that's a, that's a text argument. Comma, logical number two, is this, which is a number, greater than 100? Okay, that is the entire and function, so I'm going to close bracket, all right? Now remember, that will return a true or a false, okay? In fact, let's just test that out. I'm going to take out, I'm going to go right here, I'm just going to take out the if part, and just have the and. So if I just use and, it's gonna test, does this equal Oregon? And is uh, this number greater than 100? So this should return what? This should return false, right? Because this does not say Oregon. Let's see if it does. It returned a false, okay? Now, let's just control C, copy that. I hit control C to copy that. I'm gonna go right here to this line. Here's Oregon and this transaction is, is greater than 100, right here. So I'm going to just paste this, control V, right here. And it's going to do the same test. And in this case, it is true. That returns a value of true. Okay? So that's what we have to, um, that's what we're asking the if function right here. And while I'm down here, let me go ahead and put these in the quotation, this in the quotation mark. Because remember, that's text. If it's text, it has to go into a quotation mark. All right. We're asking, this answer right here is all of the green right there. And we're gonna ask, is that equal to true? Okay, so I'm gonna put the if function back. I'm gonna do if open bracket. That's all I need to add. The rest is the and function. And then I'm gonna ask, does that equal true? And then I'm gonna put a comma because we're gonna move to the next part of the argument. We're gonna move to the blue part over here. Okay, if that's true, 
then I want you to average these two cells right here. Otherwise, I'm going to put another comma. Now we're on argument three. I'm going to put two quotations side by side, return a blank cell. I'm going to close the bracket, and that should cover it. So it returned a it returned a um, an empty cell because the answer was false here. So this first part of the argument was not true. Therefore, it returned a blank cell. So let's drag this down. And my expectation is what? That it should be the same for all states Oregon. Here's Oregon. They're both 552. Here's Oregon. They're both 480, both 500. Okay. So it's isolating only the Oregon transactions uh, that, that meet the other criteria. All right. And if I go here to this cell and I drag the average over, it's going to sum this up. Uh, not sum it up. It's going to average it. Okay, 440. So what is this telling me? This is telling me that on average, right, customers in Oregon who are willing to spend more than $100 on transaction one will, on average, spend $5 more, in this case, on their next two transactions than the entire pool of people combined. Okay? So that is how you combine the if, the and, and the average functions together in, in order to extract a multiple, in order to isolate information you want out of a larger data set using formula combinations.